The S&P 500 and the NASDAQ are at their highest levels in over a year. The technology stock run-up continues, and we'll find out from a leading Wall Street strategist why he expects the market to continue along this bullish path through 2023. Thank you for joining us. I'm Merrill Brown. Our guest today is Jay Hatfield, founder, CEO, and portfolio manager at Infrastructure Capital Advisors. Thanks for joining us, Jay. Thanks, Merrill, for having me on your show. Um, you're very bullish on uh, the rest of 2023. You expect big gains to continue in the S&P 500. Why? Well, we started the year bullish <clears throat> really because we thought that earnings estimates for 2024 would be resilient, and they have been. So they're still um, over $240 per um, share for S&P share. And we were way more bullish than the market about inflation, which is playing itself out. <clears throat> We've seen a rapid decline in inflation. The market's realizing it. The Fed hasn't realized it yet, but they will. And so that's really the, the core. But we recently did raise our target to 4,500 to 5,000, was 4,500. And that's really because of the AI boom. And, and we can't really quantify it. That's why it's such a, a large range, because we don't really know what earnings estimates are going to be. But we do see economic activity already picking up. NVIDIA um, essentially um, is, has unlimited demand for their fast processors for AI. That's fueling demand at the data center. So that's all going to filter into the stock market. And so we're, it's really 4,500 is now our floor versus our ceiling. We've just learned this week that the uh, inflation rate in May was 4%, higher than what the Fed might have hoped for, at least in their worldview. Mm -hmm. What does that mean for inflation? Well, the, <clears throat> the great thing about this time of year, and we did anticipate this, is that this Fed is almost always about a year behind based on their um, focusing on the Phillips curve versus both monetary policy and the Phillips curve. And so now it's been a year since inflation peaked. It really peaked in June of last year. So next month we should get another huge roll down inflation to about three percent from nine so everybody really in the united states is going to figure out that inflation is decelerating except maybe the fed we might get one more rate increase but if the fed is pauses or near pauses i think that's going to be very bullish for the stock market that's really been the overhang over the last year and a half as the fed and what should consumers uh, investors out there be thinking about as they look to their portfolios in 2023 mm -hmm. well certainly you want to have um, an adequate allocation to tech but most people do. In fact, most people are over allocated to tech. So we've actually think this is a great time to add income, uh, preferred stocks, large cap dividend stocks. They're trailing the market <clears throat> and are arguably very undervalued. And everybody should build a diversified portfolio so that you have income and growth. So we would, I think now, probably most people have already gravitated towards tech, but looked for some of these value, but most importantly, income areas, particularly for older investors. Jay, how is what we can expect from the Fed and your criticism of how the Fed manages policy? What does that mean for investors? And well, it, it really actually dates back to um, the beginning of um, the Fed's focus on the 2% target. So that's really been a disaster for the middle class. That's just arguably way too low. <clears throat> and so this Fed has really, since Bernanke instituted the 2% target, been a huge problem. If you really think about the last 20 years, nominal wage growth has dropped. So we're hopeful there is some, a lot of criticism of the Fed now for obvious reasons, that they let that inflation target drift up. Nom then nominal wages can accelerate that, like they did in the 80s and 90s, and we'll have probably less even social unrest. So we're pretty bullish that that phase is over, the kind of the ultra uh, conservative Fed that's always behind the curve. And if you could wave a magic wand and put yourself in Jay Powell's shoes, what would you be doing differently? Well, we would have cut rates in March because we are taking risk with the banking system. The banking system is really built on the fact that we have an upward sloping yield curve. They to criticize Silicon Valley Bank because, oh, you were <coughs> borrowing short and lending long. Well, everyone does that. In fact, the Fed does that and they're insolvent because they did that, <coughs> um, technically insolvent. So we really need an upward sloping yield curve. We can't have this inversion for years or else the banking system's capital will decline. So they should have cut in March. I'm pretty hopeful, though, they're going to pause um, over the next three or four meetings, and that'll let the banking system uh, recover. You mentioned AI a moment ago, and there's a lot of focus on uh, AI and the opportunities in it. Uh, is AI equivalent to the internet boom of the late 90s, or is it something we won't be talking about in a year? 
And I have a unique perspective on that because <clears throat> I grew up in Silicon Valley. My mother took me to an AI lecture 50, literally 50 years ago. So this is really the holy grail <clears throat> of technology. The reason it took 50 years is it requires massive computing power, which we only now have. So this is the biggest technology development of this century. Um, the reason it's not bigger than the internet is you kind of need the inter you need a lot of these technologies to build on each other. But these fast processors that are really computers that are coming out from NVIDIA and others are revolutionizing computing, and now the software is there too. So I wouldn't underestimate the power of this boom, and you're seeing it already in the B2B market, so not so much things that we would interact with, but the demand for fast processors has never been higher in the history of technology. And do you think investors should still be buying NVIDIA, Apple, and the key stocks that are benefiting from this boom? Strangely, yes, because the analysts are slow to update their estimates. So NVIDIA guided up their earnings, uh, their revenue, sorry, by 50% for one quarter. And so the analysts, that's two, over 200% annualized. So the analysts don't know. Right now they're assuming 10%. So it goes from 50 to 10 the next quarter. They don't know. The company hasn't verified that. We think that's conservative. And also the multiple NVIDIA, a lot of people quote these huge multiples, is really just trading at about 40 times next year's earnings, which for a company growing at 200% one quarter, maybe 40, is actually pretty modest relative to the market. So there will be a time when they become overvalued. That's why we have such a wide range, but not right now. People are still adjusting to this. There's still a lot of skeptics out there. So we think, strangely, that people are actually underestimating the boom right now. And in brief, uh, Apple as well. Put that in the same uh, Apple in the same category. Apple's a little bit tougher just because it's so huge, and it's not really in ground zero. Um, really, Nvidia. There's definitely a gold rush going on in California, but this time is for data, <clears throat> not gold. And Nvidia is the leader there, and Apple is going to benefit, but not as directly. But it is great for all good to great for all technology companies right now. Jay, thank you very much. For more of today's top business news, as well as timely analysis, stay with QZ.com.